you're pretty sure you know how a paging file operates and how the system uses different resources, RAM or hard drive, you can skip to about the 14 minute mark of this uh, tutorial and you'll see the instructions on just how to set the paging file on your hardware. A paging file is a file on your hard drive that imitates your system's physical memory, RAM. The paging file is used when your system runs out of physical RAM and needs to store more data. Now the first question we need to ask is, do you need this paging file? And depending upon the physical specifications of your system, the answer could be yes or no. Generally speaking, the more RAM you have, the less need for a page file. So how does this whole thing work? Well, when your system starts, the operating system is loaded from your hard drive into the physical chips, RAM. And the information then operates your system and runs programs from RAM. Then when you run more programs or more demanding ones, more RAM fills up. The system continues to do that, switching out active and inactive programs until it uses all of its available memory. Then it looks for more space to operate. And that's where a paging file comes in. Depending upon the settings in your system, one or more disks have is an empty space reserved on them designated as paging file space. So where do you put this paging file? Well, it's important to note that paging files are best put on a different drive than your operating system. Then the paging file will not conflict with the system reading its files. That being said, if you have a newer model SSD and have plenty of space, you should put your paging file on the SSD. It'll operate much faster than it would on a traditional HDD. Okay, now how does this work? As programs use more memory, the page file will start to fill up. And if the paging file is set up to be dynamically controlled by your operating system, the system will expand it to allow more information to be stored. Now let's continue to fill the paging file uh, with more data as the demand increases until it's completely full. The system will also swap out older data for newer data, maybe releasing some data for a program that's in idle state. But when it does that, it starts to slow down. And if it has a demand that exceeds the available space completely, it may have to remove some information that the programs need just to load it back in a couple moments later. When this happens, you probably can see the effects, maybe playing a video or a game. The good news is, just like you can add more RAM, you can also add multiple disks and multiple paging files. And when they're there, Windows will just choose which one's the least active at the time. So that's how paging files or swap files work, basically. Now we're going to look at an actual example of how to configure them. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what to do. If you want to buy some more RAM, I'll get some additional hard drive space. It depends upon your system capabilities and your budget. Now to understand what system you have and its capabilities, we're going to run MS Info. It's a built-in system information that's been in Windows for years. Uh, we're going to go take a look at the first page here. And you'll see that uh, it has different information. Here it has system manufacturer. I build my own, so it's not filled in there. However, if we go down to processor, it tells me that I have an i7-2600. Pretty old. Uh, this is an old system that I built that I use for video processing. Um, tells me to tell me my BIOS, uh, but that's not relevant right now. But the manufacturer of the motherboard is the is a Zeus, and that's the model number of my motherboard. So I'm going to be able to use that information to look up the memory capacity of my motherboard. But let's go down further and find out there's, I have 16 gig installed. Um, regardless of how much is being used and all that, let's go down to where it talks about page file. I have almost a three gigabyte uh, page file and it's located on my D drive. So what to do with that information? Well, a lot of people don't know it, but in your MS info, uh, you can just click on an item that you want to check out. If you click on that, it won't do anything here, but you can do Control C to copy it. That allows us to paste it into a browser. I'll demonstrate it really quick by opening up a copy of Notepad and doing a paste here. And you'll see that it pasted in an entire line. So that tells me that it's in my buffer. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy that one piece of just the model number. Uh, I can paste the whole thing in uh, actually into a search engine. But what do you do from here? You open up a browser and you go in here and say paste in your buffer and say search and there it is it goes right to their website and we'll click on that so we can take a look at the capabilities of this motherboard so what good does that do you well if we go over here to specifications and we go down here to memory 
we can see that it'll take four DIMM slots, okay, four memories, and the max is 32 gigabytes. So I only got half of what I could have in this motherboard. Uh, I don't need any more, but you can look at it and determine how you want to upgrade. And make sure you buy the same model number with the same specs so that you have dual channel enabled. Uh, that's a whole other discussion, but it just basically makes your chips work that much faster. The next thing we're going to look at off this list is the uh, components. And we're going to go down here to storage and drives. And here's list all my hard drives. What type they are, what the formatting is, the size, how much free space, uh, that what I've named them. And here, if you go down to disks, you'll see the actual part number of manufacturer. So you'll see here that this is uh, how much free space I have and whether or not uh, I have enough space for a swap file. Now that we uh, scroll down this and see exactly uh, how many you have, it's important to note that the drives may not be the same as your disk, so especially if you have one drive partitioned into several disks. Like an E and an F both reside on one physical drive. To help explain that normally a volume consumes the entire drive. You just install it, install your operating system, and that's it. But you can split a single drive up into multiple volumes. Now that's great for organizational purposes. You want to keep your operating system separate. The problem is, is that when the programs are reading and writing to the drive, the same physical drive, it will slow down your operating system because it's using the same hardware. Now the solution is, if you have the money, is to buy a separate drive. So that can be beneficial. But if you go back to the original part of the presentation where I showed you you have two drives, one an SSD and one a physical HDD, using your SSD might be more beneficial because it's just that much faster. The perfect solution, of course, is to use two SSDs, your one for your C drive and putting your swap file on the second SSD. And eventually all systems will look like this with two SSDs, that is until some new technology comes along. Okay, sorry to digress there back to understanding what type of hard drives you should have, but let's look at this drive here and the reason we want to look at it. I go to the specifications and there's a Western Digital's part number. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go ahead and open up another browser and I'm going to search for that exact part number. And uh, let me go back up here again and say paste. Now this time there was other ones listed because there's a lot of specification sites out there, but I'm going to go ahead and try and find, uh, there's Newegg, uh, Amazon. I'm going to try and find Western Digital's and uh, website. And there it is, support ENWD. So I'm going to click on that to go to there because I want to see exactly their, their specifications. So I go here, there it is. It's a Western Digital Black, which is their uh, better, uh, faster drive. And there's a PDF to download, which we can do that. I uh, just need to know which language. Go to English. And you go down here in their specification, and it'll tell you how fast this drive is. And the reason we're doing this is so we can do this for each one of your physical drives and compare the read-write speeds. So I jump to the uh, page that has that for my drive, the one terabyte. And uh, let me uh, zoom in on this PDF a little bit. And there we go. There's the model. There's the uh, SATA. And there's the host, a buffer to host, and host to and from drive uh, speed for this drive. Now, I tailor these presentations to people that aren't technically advanced, okay? but you don't need to know what it means. All you need to know is bigger the number, the faster the number, the better off you are. So let's do the same thing for the SSD, for example. If we go down here to the Samsung SSD right here, okay, and we want to take a look at this particular model number. And again, I just copy and then paste it in. I do a search on it. Uh, I go down here. I find the Samsung site. After all these ads, there's Samsung. Now that's an M2. It's a slightly different drive. So I'm going to back up out of this and go back and try and find the right drive. And uh, there's one in Newegg, uh, Best Buy, uh, Samsung. There's the A60 Evo set, SATA 3. So five, that's a 500 gigabyte. Uh, mine's a one terabyte. But I'll just take a look here and say, well, that's the 500. And we'll just use this one speed comparison. Uh, that is after I get through this pop-up. 
And we'll go over here and we're going to look at specs, just like we did on the motherboard on the other hard drive. And there it is, up to 550. Now, if you remember, compared to the hard drive, the 150 on the uh, other drive, let's go down here again. We'll go down to the Western Digital Black. And then I'll slide my browser windows down uh, so that they're next to each other. And you can see that the difference in speed, we have 550 here. And that's sequential, okay? If we come down here, basically the same spec there, much, much faster with the SSD. Now, if you're technically inclined, you can burrow in a little bit more detail about the specifications, about sequential, average, and all that. Just go to the different specification uh, section here, and it'll tell you exactly uh, what those specs are. But basically, SSDs over HDDs. That's the bottom line. Okay, we've checked our motherboard, and we've checked our hard drives. we figured out speeds and what they're capable of. Uh, let's go take a look at the RAM for a second, and what RAM do you have in your system? We saw the total amount, but let's go and use a tool uh, called CPU ID. And I like this one because you can get the actual part number uh, for your RAM off of this. Now I'll put the link for this utility in the description of this video, but basically you go ahead and install it. And you can read several things. Here's the processor type. You can go over to the uh, motherboard tab and see what it is. And there again is the type of uh, system motherboard we have. By the way, you don't have to use MS Info. But on MS Info, you can copy paste. You can't copy paste from here. But the real reason we went here is so we can go over to the memory tab and take a look at our memory, specifically SPD. And if you notice here, there's your slots on your motherboard. And it tells you the part number. Again, you can't copy paste. So you're going to have to type this in. But you go to each slot to make sure that they all have the same part numbers uh, so that they work in dual channel mode. Then you can decide, with, based on its availability, if you want to just add more to your existing or go for four new sticks or uh, larger sizes. So here I have to type in the uh, part number. So once I have it all typed in, I copy it, and I'm going to go back to our browser again. And we're going to search for this particular uh, part number and see what's available. So let me go here and say paste that in. And now you'll find out, since this is my particular one is pretty old, you can go to the original site. So if you don't trust the used memory or you're adamant about new, you might want to buy it from here or from another site that has a discount. So let's take a look. This is 94 at uh, Corsair. It's a 2x4, so it's 8 gigabytes. So let's do a search uh, for some more memory like that. Uh, let's go to good old Amazon. And let me put that part number in. And it didn't find that exact part number from Corsair. So instead, let's do it by specs, okay? Let's uh, grab here and just put in the DDR3 and 8 gigabytes. And we get a discrete list of certain ones. You have to compare the uh, exact speed and all that. There's Patriots, uh, for example, for $34. And it's a 8 uh, gigabyte kit. The point being is you search Amazon for either the exact part number or eBay, that for that matter, or anywhere for the exact part number that you want or the exact specs so it will match your system, what your motherboard supports. So now we know what kind of hard drives we want, how much they cost, how much the memory costs, and we can decide what we want to do. Your best best probably is first buy more RAM to add it to get as much RAM as you can afford. Then add a second storage drive. Now if it's a hard drive and you want a large volume, you may have to go with a, a regular HDD. But if you can afford it, a secondary uh, high capacity SSD uh, might be where you want to go. Okay, all that was prep time. Now to get to finally get to how to actually set it. Just go to this PC either here or from Explorer and go to the properties. Right click and go to properties. And then you see advanced system settings here. If you click on that, you get another dialog box. And when the dialog box uh, pops up, we're going to uh, let's move it over here to the center. And we're going to go over here. Uh, let me get that straight. OK. And we're going to advanced tab. There's performance. OK. So we're going to click on that. And we're going to go one more time. We're going to ignore all this stuff about uh, visual speeds and all that stuff. We're going to go to advanced. And finally, we get to virtual memory. We're going to say change. Now, for this demonstration, I have it set where it's normally set. That's automatic, automatically managed. 
but I'm going to uh, change that because I want to move it to a different drive. So uh, maybe my D drive here, where it previously was. So if I go here, you'll see that I can select any drive I want. And over here, uh, it has a system managed size. And now, if you remember from earlier, we talked about Windows doing it. If they uh, do it, it takes more time for the system to expand and shrink it. So we're going to change this to a custom size. Now, what's important here is to make sure you set the right size. I'm going to go with their recommended size, but I'm going to set it for one size minimum and max so it doesn't spend time shrinking and expand it. It's just that. This way it reserves a certain spot on the hard drive uh, and it just uses it and it doesn't spend any time messing around. Now you can do other ones here, as we talked about in the demo, if you think you need more than one. It's a rarity. Uh, but again, you put your file on your SSD or on one of your hard drives, and based on your SSD and hard drive specifications, figure out which one's the fastest. Now for each drive, you have to press the set button in order to make sure that setting for that particular drive is done. So we click here, and then after you're done, you go down to the bottom and click on the OK button. And even after the OK, sometimes it'll tell you you need to reboot for the changes to take effect. So there you have it, all about paging files, and maybe uh, more than you wanted to know about paging files. But it'll get you the foundation to decide how to upgrade your system uh, to the best performing specs, and then decide where you're going to put your paging file. Hey, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like this video. And if you want to get more, just subscribe to Old Guy Geek. You can also follow me at Facebook or Twitter. The links to those are in the description of this video.